Hello, Woodland friends, and welcome to another session of Back Porch Forestry. I'm Dr. David Merker, Extension Forester with the University of Tennessee. And as you can tell, we're not on the back porch today. It's too cloudy of a day. And so in order to get enough light for recording, I've had to step off of the back porch to the edge of the woods. Uh, we've had a hen turkey that's uh, nested fairly close to the back porch, and she might show up over my shoulder here while I'm speaking. So let me go ahead and share the screen as we get started with today's presentation addressing the issue of top quality hardwood veneer. I would like to give a special thanks to the David R. Webb Company and the U.S. Forest Service uh, for their use with, in uh, the photographs that are in today's video, so I'm grateful for that. Forest landowners understand that some trees are distinguished as being exceptional. Not every forest contains such rare trees. And in the hardwood industry, such trees are termed veneer. And so from veneer uh, trees come veneer logs and from veneer logs come veneer sheets. And unlike most logs that are processed into lumber, veneer sheets are thin layers of wood produced by slicing the logs. Now, essentially, <clears throat> any log can be processed as veneer. However, for hardwood trees, normally only those logs of the desired species and with the finest characteristics are selected. This is especially the case when uh, the finished wood product is used as face veneer, uh, which is a surface covering on top of core stock veneer. So core stock veneer is the underlayment on which the face veneer is laid. Core stock uh, is common and it doesn't require the fine characteristics as does face veneer. For example, uh, red oak cabinets could have side panels with a thin layer of fine oak face veneer overlaid on a thicker layer of common yellow stock core stock. And the focus of this video then is on hardwood face veneer. Now, markets for veneer are classified as either markets for veneer trees or for veneer logs. Forest landowners are most concerned with markets for their veneer trees, in other words, standing trees. Many wrongly informed landowners have mistakenly sold fine veneer trees as standard lumber trees, receiving only a fraction of the full market value. Landowners who, therefore, I guess I'd say landowners who are not expert at identifying and measuring uh, and appraising veneer trees should seek the assistance of, a, of an experienced professional forester. Now, most loggers and timber buyers and mill operators are potential markets for standing veneer trees. And these individuals often have direct markets with veneer mills and for small quantities of veneer trees, these are the landowner's best opportunity to sell them. However, when a, a timber sale has exceptional quality uh, veneer trees or even a large quantity of them, owners should extend beyond these normal markets and include veneer mills and both domestic and export markets exist. So veneer logs are marketed into four major uses, architectural, secondary manufacturing, profile wrap moldings and paneling. The, uh, the architectural market is for premium logs only. In other words, those logs without defects, longer log lengths, and just a narrow, well-centered heart. Architectural veneer becomes wall and door paneling in executive offices and public buildings. And groups of veneer trees originated from the same forest are especially sought after for this market because their physical traits, which include color and texture, will be similar. These trees can be bulked and then marketed together and used to fill large orders for the same building. Now the secondary manufacturing market, uh, it serves primarily the furniture, cabinet and flooring industry. It's less rigid in quality specifications than is the architectural market. Shorter lengths of veneer are used uh, that can be cut between the defects uh, and uniformity in wood color. That is however, very important. They want consistency in the product. And then profile wrap molding market. This is a market that fits between the previous two. This veneer is wrapped or glued around reconstituted products such as fiberboard and is used to substitute for solid wood molding. Finally, wall paneling market is the lowest class and includes eight foot mismatched wall panels. Um, because panels do not need to, be, to match, some wood defects, if they're sound, are acceptable. I want to speak briefly about some criteria for, for veneer trees and criteria for qualifying as a fine base face veneer tree can really be condensed into one precondition 
and that's top quality. Top quality is related to the amount of and the extent of grade defects that are found on the lower trunk of the tree. Typically, veneer trees are produced on the butt log. In other words, that first log that's cut from the lower tree trunk. Grade defects are abnormalities that lower the quality by reducing the utility, and they cannot be renewed, removed essentially by adjustments and scaling. In other words, they're permanent. So there's two types of grade defects that are recognized, and that is exterior and interior. For a thorough review of hardwood log defects, I encourage you to, to refer back to a back porch forestry video that was produced a while back that addresses this topic, and that's titled Hardwood Log Defects. Tree defects are assigned to two general classes. There are exterior grade defects, and these include abnormalities on the bark surface that can actually be seen. They indicate interior degrade and include such things as bumps and bulges, butt swell, knots, lesions, and sweep. Holes, whether they're both large or small, and that includes bird pack, are also exterior grade defects, as are seams that are caused by lightning or frost or drought. Perhaps the most difficult exterior grade defect to detect is dormant buds. These are very small recessed buds that exist along the trunk from which small sprouts that are called epicormic branches will periodically flush. If logs with dormant buds are processed into veneer slices, the resulting veneer slice will be lower value. Interior grade defects are abnormalities that are typically not apparent on the exterior bark surface, but that become apparent or visible on the log end when the log is felled and bucked or cut into smaller logs. The most common interior grade defect noticeable from viewing the end of the log is discoloration, such as staining or streaking of the wood. Interior defects might also include double pith, which is uh, two hearts that resulted from two stems growing together when the stems were young, loose heart, which is a separation of the annual growth rings, and grease spots, soak, or pinworm. All, all these are results of poor site quality or mismanagement of the forest. Here are some exterior grade defects beginning uh, in the upper left and continuing clockwise. We see seam, uh, whether it's, again caused by lightning or frost. We have epicormic branching in the upper right. And then there's bird peck uh, in the lower right, and then just a standard knot in the lower left. Notice what uh, exterior grade defects look like once the log has been cut open, sawn open. They're not very apparent, maybe on the surface of the log, but they become very apparent once it's open. Now here are some interior grade defects beginning in the upper left and going clockwise and they include loose heart. That's that separation of growth rings we were talking about. Um, spot worm in the lower right that's caused by a small worm that causes this. It's not apparent from the exterior again. We've got mineral stain in the lower right and then pinworm holes, very hard, difficult to see. Uh, but these are defects that become apparent once the log has been cut up. Sure, what happened here? Internal wood characteristics such as texture and color are also factors. Um, premium veneer logs must have a well centered heart and an even grain texture, meaning that the annual growth rings are relatively evenly spaced and not fluctuating between rapid and slow growth as viewed in this photo. The wood color should be consistent uh, without mineral or fungal streaks. However, there are, again, limited markets for off-colored or lower quality veneer wood. Interior grade defects are very difficult to, to detect while the tree is still standing. So proficiency comes only after years of experience. Um, seasoned foresters and veneer buyers and loggers are often very surprised by the presence of internal defects once the tree has been harvested, even though the tree's exterior signals appeared safe prior to the harvest. Judgment on interior wood quality often can be associated with, uh, with the characteristics of the forest. So let's address some forest clues that can signal poor internal quality. For example, 
Evidence of um, heavy woodlot grazing or ground fires indicate an increased potential for lower grade veneer. Poor sites also indicate high risk and typically exhibit such things as shallow topsoil or, or droughty conditions, maybe poor internal drainage, and are often found on southern or southwesterly slopes. Further, forest stands that are overly mature are also high risk for interior grade defects. And overly mature, for, for, for overly mature forest have trees with many broken tops. They might have um, stem holes or, sw or swollen, often hollow bases. Irregular bark pattern will also signal damage, indicating a site limitation or that the tree growth has been altered by a pathogen or an environmental stress such as fire, ice, or wind. Now, specifications relative to log length and diameter must also be met. Markets for best quality face veneer logs require a minimum of eight feet in length, 10 to 12 feet for top price, and prefer at least a 16 inch diameter uh, of the bark, uh, diameter um, inside the bark. In other words, at the small end of the log. This is a general guide, of course, many uh, veneer mills will have their own specifications. Now, most hardwood veneer trees really never qualify as veneer. Normally only about one to 2% of the total board foot volume uh, of a hardwood timber sale is veneer. Yet that same volume could account for as much as 20% of the total sale value. Thus misgrading a veneer tree as a standard lumber tree could be very costly. Before selling any trees, you're always encouraged to seek the assistance of an experienced professional forester and perhaps several. Do not select and sell only the best trees from your forest while leaving the undesirables. Doing so is high grading or removing the most valuable, highly desirable trees while the undesirables are left behind to recede and perpetuate a future stand. This is just not, not good forest management. Instead, select trees for harvest uh, based on their financial maturity. This might include veneer trees that have matured, of course, but should also include smaller inferior trees or those that are just undesirable species maybe whose crowns are competing with the future crop trees. In other words, manage your forest with a constant goal of improvement, leaving species and trees with good potential following a harvest. Pricing your veneer trees can be very difficult and is really often based more on a seller's experience, um, knowledge of the markets and just whatever the market will bear. Published uh, reports for veneer prices are virtually non-existent, they're sporadic, and they're just difficult to interpret. So I like to say that pricing a, a good quality veneer tree is a lot like pricing an antique sewing machine. At, at, at one auction, the antique sewing machine might bring $100 and the other auction, $10,000. It's hard to explain. Uh, so again, it's very hard to price veneer, but there are averages that foresters tend to understand. So I've given you here some examples of some subtle defects that are challenging to perceive. You take a look at this white oak tree. Uh, what I want to point out is you'll see if I can get my cursor to work. Uh, there's a, an old lightning strike. Can you see that lightning strike? So a lot of people might not see that, but that is clearly an exterior defect. And if you look very closely, right at about 10 foot, there's a defect as well. That's an old knot. You see the swirl there. And this tree uh, would most likely not qualify as a veneer, except for maybe a poor quality or lower quality veneer tree. Look at another example here. Um, again, this is very subtle and it's hard for the average eye to see, but if you look right there, that's an old limb knot. A close up of it um, shows the center of the limb right there. And you'll tend to see this circle. Sometimes there'll be concentric rings around it that uh, definitely designate uh, an, an, old, uh, an old limb knot, and that's a defect for sure. Now, some, some of these can be tolerated in veneer, veneer, veneer logs. They can uh, cut some of these defects out, but certainly if you get too many of them, uh, that's gonna be an issue. They do prefer the, the defects to be lined up if they, if they can be, because then they could split the log right on the defects. Another example here looks like a perfect tree, and it is a nice tree. This is a white oak. And it probably would qualify as a veneer tree, but even this tree is not without defects. You have to look real close right there is actually a defect and a blow up of it. And you'll see the center of the knot right there. And so that's uh, an old limb knot that uh, uh, is considered a defect. 
So this is the conclusion. Hardwood veneer uh, essentially is a complex wood product and correct identification and valuation marketing really is something that few landowners can do and certainly don't do regularly. Professional experience is therefore vital to assure that you are fairly paid for your veneer trees. Uh, and as always with these back porch forestry sessions, there is a survey. I encourage you to, to um, uh, go onto that site. I'll post that on the, on the YouTube if you don't wanna write this down. And also there is a publication that supports this titled Quality Hardwood Veneer. Uh, that will also be on the YouTube site, but if not, you can just Google that title, Quality Hardwood Veneer uh, and my last name, and you'll find that and it expounds on what we've addressed today. So thanks for your attendance and uh, have a good day in your woods.